Hey guys, so finally um, I'm able to do a video on how to make your own impulse sensor. A couple of guys have been asking me this for quite a while. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Alright, so as promised, here it is. So materials that are you're going to be using to build this impulse sensor is a one in one half female adapter, a one in one half a plug with a gasket and a one and one half cap so all together when they fit put them all together it's gonna look like this if I could screw it on there you go so this is the one side cap on the other side so the barb it's gonna be fit it into here once we drill that there and on this side will be the BNC connector that's gonna hook up to the cable for the scope and of course the most important piece is your PSO sensor now this particular PSO sensor came out of this board this board sorry which is a um, smoke detector so that actual PSO sensor was used as the beeper so took that off and as you can see it's gonna be fitted inside that almost perfectly okay so first thing I did was uh, drill a hole through the um, plug the takes more than like in between one half and nine sixteen is basically the hole because you know it's there's a taper on that thread on that part so basically you want you don't want it to be too small or too big that the barb would not be able to fit or the threads of it right you need to be able to tread it down and tighten it right so that, that's what it looks like on the inside so it's threaded in through the plastic Right, so I might have to put some um, silicone on it just so it would seal up okay so the next step for me was to do some soldering so on the um, PSO sensor you have the black and the white wire basically one on the inside one on the outside so I soldered it to this connector which basically I didn't do a good, too good job on I have to resolder it again but in any case, so I soldered here and on the other side on the BNC connector I uh, soldered two cables okay. as well. So the next thing I did is to drill a hole on the cap side uh, for the BNC connector to push through. So you can see, so this connector has to be small enough to pass through that nut so that you can lock the uh, BNC connector on the cap end. And so basically what's going to happen now is it's slowly taking play uh, form so that this would be on the end cap like so and then on the other side so on the other side so it's going to be the, the sensor is going to be on this side if we connect that like so All right so the sensor is going to be on that side just okay so here is the sensor side so what I did is just like um, put super glue on it and just to hold that sensor in place and like on the other side I have my vacuum tube vacuum hose connected to that barb alright so what we're gonna do right now is uh, take the female adapter and screw that piece on alright Okay, make sure it's tight. Next thing we do, now we're just gonna connect these two together. All right, male and female connector. Right now, I don't care which way. That's the reason why I said I needed to be interchangeable, or you can swap the connections around. For the reason that we want the amplitude to be going upwards when you're putting positive pressure on it and then we want 
the wave point to go negative or the signal to go negative or downwards if we apply a negative pressure to it or a vacuum and that's what we're going to do right now we're going to test it out get up to the oscilloscope and see if we have the right orientation so I'm just going to um, start the picoscope so this is a male B and C all right, and it's going to be connected to a female BNC connector. This is a female female on both ends. Six feet cable connected to channel one. All right. Just wait for this to. It's just going to start up. Okay, so that is our channel A. Okay, take. take into the part of the setup here. So now we're going to change this to about 500 millivolts and time base we're going to change to at least one second for division okay and when you're using this uh, impulse sensor you always have to change it to AC when I put positive pressure for example me I'm gonna blow on the actual hose right now I want to see the signal going up let's do this right now okay so the first thing that it did the signal went down before going up meaning to say my leads are backward so what I'm gonna do is uh, set this up for a bit okay so first I'm just gonna disconnect this Open it up again. Slowly, I don't want to cut that wire. So all I'm going to have to do is reverse that connection. All right. Make sure it's tight again. Okay. Well, let's connect it up again. to see I'm gonna zoom you in again on the Pico Let's see I'm gonna blow it in again give it a couple times okay so right now I just pause this for a while Our orientation now is correct so when I put positive pressure on it it move into the positive direction first it goes up vertically before it goes down so right now we're done we've just created uh, an impulse sensor so the next thing we're gonna do is test it out on an actual vehicle okay so that is a view our sensor connected to it's connected to my service van right now so that is the view of the uh, sensor connected to the exhaust pipe so what we're gonna do right now is I'm not gonna put a trigger on it and we have the same setup as earlier it's one second for division 500 millivolts AC so right now I'm just going to start it. And there is our signal. 
So we might want to change our time base and our amp amplitude setting for A so that we can see a lot more uh, detail on that. So obviously it's a lot less than 500 millivolts. Let's do 200. Change the setting to uh, say 10 milliseconds per division. Well, that's too much. Say 20. And there you see, those are my exhaust pulses. So that we can stop this from moving around so much. Let's try to put a uh, trigger. Repeat, channel A. Let's put that trigger right here. And there you see the pulses centered at zero. So when you're checking or you're using this for exhaust pulses or checking for integrity of um, valve, you'd want to use this more on uh, cranking rather than um, idle or running. Because a lot of this hashes would be from firing of the cylinders. But let's see this, what happens when we... Let's look at the difference. See that. That's when it stopped. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to do a clear flood crank. So what I'm going to do is step on the uh, accelerator. Run this again and see what we get at cranking. Cranking now. Okay. Let's play around with this because now crank is going to be slower. Let's do 100 milliseconds for division. Let's do that again. Okay. Stop. Okay. No, oh. now I'm just doing a couple of diagnostics. Oh, <laughs> Sorry about that. My neighbor uh, thought that I was having <laughs> an issue with my vehicle. But you can see a bit of difference between each cylinder exhaust wise but nothing too drastic I would say it's all even across the board of course there would be some minor differences in the waveform between each of them each hump